Good afternoon, Again. ladies and gentlemen. This is Changing in the Ways of Knowing. I am Mr. Reitman. I'm Mr. Plaza. And I'm Mr. DeVici. And we're going to be learning more about the scientific revolution. Importantly, you have to know what the key and essential questions are for this unit. How did the scientific revolution change the way people viewed the world and the universe? And when and why do people change their minds? Right, so we're continuing with the idea of change. Um, continue thinking about why things change and how people respond to those things when they do change. Okay, so before we get into the actual scientific revolution, it's going to be important for us to understand what happened before we had science. And as we've discussed multiple times in this class so far, uh, before science, pretty much everything that people knew came from ancient texts or from the Bible. Very religious time, if you think about the Middle Ages and think about the Renaissance. Here are some examples of what people thought um, about the Middle Ages, of uh, different scientific ideas in the Middle Ages. The overwhelming majority of people believed that the Earth was located at the center of the universe. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense because if you stand still and you look at the sky, it looks like the sky is moving above you and you're standing still. Okay, so everything would be moving around you. And as we know now and as we're going to talk about in this unit, that's not the case. But that was the, the claim at the time. Okay, people believe that the planets revolved around the Earth. We call this the geocentric theory. In other words, that the Earth is in the center. So geo means Earth, centric in the center. And the church claimed that God created the Earth at the center of the universe, the center of everything. We also had this idea called alchemy, which basically means that scientists at this time were trying to take chemicals that already existed and tried to combine them to create magical chemicals. Things like the elixir of life, which would help you live forever, or um, by turning metal into gold. So if they thought if you mix certain chemicals together, you could take a regular metal and turn it into gold, which would make you rich. So these are the things that were going on before we had science. Which leads us into new ideas. Between the time period of 1300 to 1600, the Renaissance was inspiring curiosity. This was when scholars began questioning old techniques and claims. They even began questioning the church. So why? The invention of the printing press helped spread ideas. Before the printing press, if you had an idea, the only way it passed between people was through word of mouth. But through the way of the printing press, it was rapidly producing papers, rapidly producing new ideas, and information was spread easily. And the invention of new tools. Scientists saw that observations did not match ancient beliefs. And I'll give you an example of Galileo. Now, he challenged the church when he said that the earth revolved around the sun rather than everything revolving around earth. And again, this challenge, bringing it up to the church, was uh, pretty hard for the church to understand and reason with him. Right. So when people got these new tools and ideas and these new books and things that were published, it really led them to start questioning what was around them and look at things in more detail. So the results of this uh, were first that people began to question the church teachings. Now this seems a lot easier to us today because we can question ideas. We're actually supposed to question ideas. And back then the church really told people what to do. So there wasn't as much questioning of ideas. There was also the use of the scientific method. And you may remember the scientific method or currently use it in your science classes. And this is a procedure that's done to help gather and test ideas. And there are four main things that you look at as part of the scientific method. You formulate your question. What is the question that I want to have asked? You formulate a hypothesis or a logical guess. You then test your hypothesis in an experiment. And then after that, you interpret the data and you draw conclusions based on what your findings were. Right, so this is the time when we start to see this method used in, what, in a lot of areas. We then had collective learning, which was scientists then built on that knowledge, built on the scientific method to some degree, to learn more about the universe and how it works. And technology that we had during this era helped shape our technology today. And finally, it helped to contribute to the age of exploration, 
All right. This allowed people to explore more of the world. So having all these results allowed to greater expansion of ideas. So for Mr. Reitman. And Mr. Plaza. And Mr. DeVici. This is the Scientific Revolution. Have a great day.